I'm John Gilmore. I'm from Farm Lab Diagnostics, where we're in the business of proving animal health through the use of cutting edge science. And today we're talking a bit about IBR, or infectious bovine rhinotracheitis. Well, IBR is a viral disease. It, um, it's a viral disease of cattle, a herpes virus, and that's the technical stuff out of the way. So essentially what IBR does is it can be a cause of a number of different uh, problems on farms. It can be um, primarily a cause of respiratory disease or pneumonia type symptoms in cattle. It can also have an impact on fertility and it can also be quite a significant source of immunosuppression. So we, we tend to see that quite a bit that where we have um, endemic IBR in herds, they tend to suffer with other diseases as well, and that's that's a bit that's down to the immunosuppression. I suppose my understanding of, of IBR is it's a it's a herpes virus. It's something similar to, to glandular fever in, in humans, so it, it causes the same. If you've got glandular fever, you get run down, you, you get tired, you get a lot of other diseases as well. IBR spread by animal to animal contact mainly, so an animal that has IBR and it starts shedding it, so I suppose there's a couple of things to understand about IBR. Once an animal is infected with IBR, it, can, it will remain infected for the remainder of its life. The IBR will live in the nervous system of the animal and at any stage it can what we call reactivate. So it can reactivate and the animal can start shedding the IBR in large quantities. So it can shed it through its nasal secretions or discharges or whatever, and that can, that can spread to other animals. And stress can be a significant reason why IBR gets reactivated. So sometimes we don't even know that we have animals that are IBR positive, and then something happens, something stresses that animal, and it starts to shed, and then other animals that are in contact with it Will, will get infected with IBR as well. The, the economic cost of IBR, again, is, is like a lot of these diseases, it's difficult, it varies from farm to farm. Some farms we, where we work with, we'll see that IBR, when it's uncontrolled, it can get big outbreaks of pneumonia type diseases, especially in, in younger stock or maybe cattle that are being fattened. But the, the big area where we see IBR really now is that, um, it's, it's there as a background disease in a lot of herds. It's one of those things that's contributing to, to poor health. And um, so the cost, the impact that this can have will be, rel will be, will be determined by the number of other stressors and the, the level of management in those herds. So the main ways for testing for IBR are by taking a blood sample or a milk sample Again, we're looking for antibodies, so that is that the animal's immune response to the IBR virus. So when the cow gets infected with IBR, it, it starts to circulate in the animal system, whether it's a cow or a calf, and as part of the cow's immune response to protect herself, she will produce antibodies. We can measure those antibodies in a blood or a milk sample, and that's how we generally look for IBR. Another way that we can determine if IBR is present on farms is through the use of nasal swabs uh, and or t uh, samples from other respiratory tissue or maybe if, if you're unfortunate that an animal dies you can take samples and take, um, take pieces for instance of, of the trachea where IBR will be present and you use a molecular test for that, a PCR test where you actually detect the organism itself or the virus itself in those swabs or tissue. In most situations, IBR can only be controlled on farm through the use of vaccination. The reason for this is that um, it's very difficult to keep IBR out of your herd um, through because animals can, con can come in contact with neighboring animals or it can be brought in through other means such as on, on clothing or um, through transport or other things like that. The other thing is that if you have IBR in your herd, then animals can start shedding at any stage and the use of vaccination suppresses the shedding of the virus and therefore reduces the chances that um, IBR is going to spread within the herd. For more information on what we've discussed or how any of Farm Lab services can 
help to improve animal health on farm, go to our website www.farmlab.ie where we're in the business of improving animal health through the use of cutting edge science.